Tim Cook is in China again today. It's his third trip so far this year as the Apple CEO looks to shore up relations ahead of Trump's potential trade battle. And it comes as Chinese tech giant Huawei is set on making their clearest play yet to split their phones from U.S. software. Our dear DeBose is looking into that in today's Tech Check. Morning, Dee. Hey, good morning, Carl. Turns out cutting off China and blacklisting Huawei, that has only fueled the drive to create their own chips and software. Another signal comes this week with the release of Huawei's new Mate 70 smartphone, which builds on a hardware breakthrough that it made last year with the Mate 60. Now, that one included an advanced chip made by Huawei's semi-arm that industry observers, they didn't even think it was capable of. With this model, Huawei is also launching its first fully homegrown operating system known as Harmony OS, meant to compete with the two dominant ones out there. That's, of course, Apple's iOS and Google's Android. Now, this would essentially be a third Chinese rail as Huawei positions itself as self-reliant, challenging Western dominance not only in smartphones, but this, of course, has implications for the generative AI arms race as well. It is likely no coincidence that its release coincides with Tim Cook's latest visit, Huawei's last product release that came just hours after Apple's iPhone 16 unveiling in September. And then that Mate 60 with the breakthrough in the microchip, that was released during a visit from U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo last year. Now, shortly after, she called that development incredibly disturbing. And she said that the threat from China was different than that of the Cold War decades ago. Quote, it's technology, it's AI, it's moving fast. Now, this is, of course, a threat that the incoming Trump administration will continue to try to combat. The question that still remains, though, is how and how do you enforce it? The original export controls on Huawei, they were implemented in that first Trump administration. It did have the effect of just crippling Huawei's smartphone business. But less than five years later, here we are. Those ambitions have been revived. They're making unexpected hardware leaps and they're challenging iPhone sales in China. Meanwhile, the attempt to revive chip manufacturing here in America, guys, that continues to hit roadblocks. Our own Rohan Goswami reporting that the Commerce Department is close to wrapping up a roughly $8 billion grant for Intel under the CHIPS Act. But here's the kicker. It's reportedly about half a billion dollars less than originally expected thanks to doubts over whether Intel can really deliver. Now, to be sure, Carl and Sarah, China's chip capabilities, they are still far behind the U.S. for those advanced chips. But the stakes are only rising, especially in AI, where leadership, of course, rests largely on chip technology. You know, Trump administration officials talk about this idea of strategic tariffs. I would think this falls under strategic. Is there more they can do to build on what the Biden administration has done and take a tougher line to ensure that they don't get that technology? I mean, no doubt they're going to try everything, but the last few years have been like whack-a-mole, right? Um, Chinese companies, Huawei, they found workarounds, they found loopholes. I mean, at first it was renting GPUs through, you know, a third party, and there was a tech website that recently took a look inside of one of the Huawei phones and found one that was manufactured by TSMC. So this is just really hard stuff to control, and all the while, I mean, China's making its own chip advancement. So... Is it enough to simply, you know, ban the export of our technology or TSMC technology? Um, this is certainly a theme that's going to play out in the years ahead. And you can see this chart right here is how Huawei has been able to challenge Apple over the last few years in its home market. Yeah, we're paying attention. Thank you, Deirdre. Deirdre Thanks. Bosa.